The book that uh, any number of us have been reading, this book by Barbara Brown Taylor, talks about how we create sacred moments in our life. And we have to slow down long enough to recognize that God is speaking to, into our lives. And sometimes we're so preoccupied, we're so busy with our dreams and schemes and our smartphones and our to-do lists that we miss the ways in which God is speaking into our lives each moment. So the chapter that a number of us have read for this week and this sermon is based upon the spiritual practice of saying no. The spiritual practice of saying no which is different than saying yes. This is what Barbara Brown Taylor says about yes. She says, yes is one of those words capable of changing a life through an utterance of a single syllable yes. And it's wonderful at times to say yes. Yes, I'll have that extra slice of apple pie. Yes, Tricia, I will marry you. Yes, yes, John, I will go with you to Tahiti. Yes, yes, and thank you for paying. Sometimes it's great to say yes. And we live in a world where we honor people who say yes. Yes, I'll take that job. Yes, I'll serve on that committee. Yes, I will do what you ask me to do. And we get a lot of strokes for being busy for doing things as well. Yet we are aware that there are times in our life when we get overextended. Anyone here ever get overextended? Anyone ever feel like they said yes one too many times? Yeah. So while it is wonderful to say yes, Trisha proposed to me how many 20 times before I said yes, Trisha? I lost count. Lost count. It's wonderful to say yes at times, but sometimes we are aware in our lives when we've said yes one too many times, and we feel like we are overwhelmed. Or we go about the work that we said yes to with great reluctance, and it's not good for us, and it's not good for others. This morning's passage in both Leviticus and in Exodus is about keeping the Sabbath. And the Sabbath is about saying yes to God and no to hyper busyness in our lives. So this is what the, the great theologian Karl Barth said. A being is only free, a being is only free when he or she can determine the limits to one's own activity. You ever feel like you are held hostage to your smartphone? You ever feel like you're held hostage to your calendar or held hostage to your list of responsibilities, as wonderful as they may be? Karl Barth said, we are free when we have the ability to say no. And Barbara Brown Taylor says, a spiritual practice in life is saying no. In working with the nominating committee uh, this year, I said to the nominating committee at the beginning, a holy no from someone is as good as a holy yes. That in church life, we need to give each other the freedom to say no. No, I'm too busy right now. No, this is not a good match for my gifts. Because when we're able to say a holy yes, yes, that fits my gifts yes, I have the energy for it, then we thrive and our church family thrives. And so I think it's important, as radical a notion as this may be, to say no to responsibilities here in the church, to say no to responsibilities as wonderful as they may be out in the wider community, because it's not the right time or the right match for our gifts. That's what's going on in this passage. So I invite you, if you wish, to turn to Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 through 11, part of the Ten Commandments. And one of those commandments is keeping the Sabbath. Chapter 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. 
But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your sons or your daughters, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien residents in your towns. For you don't make people work so that you can rest. For in the six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the Sabbath day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. It says here it consecrated it. The word consecrate is to set something apart as sacred. So several of us met at Beverly Commons Conservation Area in Beverly Farms. How many people have been here, been to that location? Ronnie? A lot of people that I've met, uh, Stephen, Tricia, a lot of people that I've met a long time, Beverly folks, have never been there. It's a wonderful 100 acre uh, gem of a park in Beverly Farms, open to all of us. And I was walking with one of the people this morning by a wetlands, and the person said to me, this really feels like Sunday. And I thought, well, it feels like Sunday because it is Sunday. And I said, well, what do you mean by that? And she said, I feel really calm. I feel like my life has slowed down. And this is a person with a lot of plates that they spin in life, a lot of responsibilities. They work really hard. They do really important work. And she said, it's so hard for me to slow down on weekends. But as I walk along this wetlands, and as I hear the birds and the bullfrogs call to one another, she said, it feels like Sunday. Keeping the Sabbath is a counter-cultural act. Because when I was growing up, many of us were growing up, they had the blue laws, and there wasn't much to do on a Sunday, right? But now Sundays are like every other day. And this is not to guilt trip any of us, because some of us have to work on Sunday. We have that responsibility. And if we're working on Sundays, the question is, when do we find time for Sabbath? When do we find time to be? rather than to do. When do we find time in our life, whether it's Sunday morning, and that's an ideal time if, if we don't have to work, when do we find the time to simply rest? In the Jewish tradition, they have Shabbat. In Shabbat, the Sabbath begins with sundown on Friday, when you can see three stars in the sky, and the Sabbath ends on Saturday evening with the sunset. And they light two candles. And the first reading they read is the one from Exodus. It's a reminder that God created the heavens and the earth in six days, and on the seventh day, God, excuse me, God rested. And if God could take a day off, then who are we to not take a day off? So they light a candle in every home, every Jewish home, and they remind themselves that God rested and so should we. And then they read the second passage, and the, pa the second passage is a story of the freedom from exodus, from exile, and with the exodus from slavery in Egypt towards the promised land. And as they journeyed for those 40 years in the wilderness, they took a Sabbath day every week to remind themselves that they were freed from God, by God from slavery in Egypt, and that that freedom is the freedom to rest. We are invited to rest in God's presence, to rest with our family, to rest at the beach, to rest in our garden, to rest in our backyard with a cup of coffee, and to rest in the company of other people of faith. We gather on Sunday mornings to remind ourselves that we are not little gods and little goddesses. That it doesn't all depend upon us. That it's okay for us at times to slow down and simply be. And to rest, to remind ourselves that God is the source of our freedom. We're always on in life, it seems. 
We compare ourselves to one another on Facebook. Who had the best vacation? Who had the best day off? Whose kids are doing the best? We, never, we rarely post when we are struggling. We need to take a break, says the writer of Exodus and Leviticus. We need to rest and remember that we don't have to prove our worth by doing or comparing ourselves to others or get glowing review from our friends. We need to simply rest and be reminded that God loves us and cherishes us just the way we are. That wonderful saying by Philip Yancey about God's grace, there's nothing we can do to make God love us more, and there's nothing we can do to make God love us less, that the very nature of God is to cherish us and embrace us and accept us just the way we are with all of our strengths and with all of our weaknesses, that which makes each one of us who we are. And so we might want to take a lesson from our Jewish sisters and brothers. The Sabbath for us Christians actually begins with sundown on Saturday night. And so you might want to start by, when you have your dinner, it could be a slice of pizza, it could be a nice Saturday night dinner, light a couple of candles. Perhaps read this passage from Exodus to remind us that we need only to rest in God's love and God's grace. A friend of mine puts out his clothes on Saturday night, takes a bath on Saturday night, nice leisurely bath. When was the last time you had a nice leisurely bath? <laughs> then he gets a good night's rest, gets up on Sunday morning, has a night's breakfast, plays with his kids, and then they go to church. No rush, no stress. Sometimes we don't have the luxury. Sometimes we have to work on Sunday. We have responsibilities on Sunday. But we are invited to rest and to carve out those sacred moments in our life when we remember our worth is found and belonging to the one who was, is, and always will be the creator of heaven and earth. And may God's people say, Amen. And in your program this morning, on the sermon notes, is a homework assignment. This week, I know this is going to make some of us uncomfortable, this week say no to something. Because you're too busy. Or you just need to rest. Practice saying no. See how it feels. Just monitor your own emotional temperature. And just take note. That is the good news. Thanks be to God. And may God's people say, Amen.